free. Mr. Bejeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. So, the reason why I mention it is I haven't heard of any local cemeteries that have done that. It's right, and I understand that that's in place, but I'll clarify it right now that we okay. keep the cremated remains until the person's next of kin retrieves them back from us. So, so do you have any that you've had for a long time? Um, yes. Some. Some. <laughs> so to answer your question, so to answer your question with the scattering piece, some of the, and I, I believe the crematory that we use is located on the grounds of a cemetery which is required in Massachusetts, um, but they have a scattering garden there at the cemetery. So different cemeteries have those options. Um, there is no scattering garden here on the island at any of the cemeteries. A couple of the churches have what they refer to as a memorial garden where they either oh. bury a biodegradable urn in the ground or they simply place the cremated remains into the ground. Well, that's a great idea. Now, now when someone, if someone wants to be cremated here, where does the body go? Um, off island to a crematory. In Massachusetts, funeral homes cannot have their own crematory, so we do not. Um, but what happens in Massachusetts is funeral homes help um, the whole process of cremation. We take care of um, the transportation pieces of that. We take care of uh, procuring all of the permits and filing all of the necessary paperwork. We shelter the remains for the 48 hour period that's required under the state law before cremation takes place. Oh, so you call the medical examiner also mm -hmm. to take yeah. care of all that? Yeah. I see. And then um, we bring the cremated remains back here to the island for families to get from us, pick up from us, or we would deliver them to a family. I see, I see. Any other questions on cremation? Yes, ma'am. The reason um, for the expense within the last five years for cremation going up so high, is it because of these containers or the fact that you have to go off island or what? Is the, re the, is the reason for the increasing expense in cremation having to do with the increasing and cost of these? And, and I guess, and I guess that, that, presum that presumed that there have been rapid rises in the cost of cremation. I didn't know that. So, it, so have there been? Significant increases in the cost of cremation? I don't and think there's so been well. significant increases in the cost of cremation, but the cost of any business has gone up in the last five or ten years. The cost of traditional funeral has gone up as well. Our costs have gone up. I mean, for example, I don't, it, it, it's not, you know, really known, but, you know, we have two vehicles that are registered as hearses here on the island because when one is off for the day to go up to the crematory, we need another vehicle here on the island in case there's another emergency to serve another family. So those kind of things. I mean, if some, you know, if we send a licensed director off to the crematory, we need another licensed director here on the island to cover the needs of the people here on the island. Um, so, so you're saying costs in general have gone up, and there isn't. You, you haven't noted that a, a particular. Let me put it this way: that the cost of cremation has gone up more rapidly than the cost of other kinds of services. No, I don't think so. That's and, and in terms of, we were talking a little bit before about the kind of. In broad terms, the percentage of people who are cremated versus the percentage who are not here on island. Mm -hmm. In broad terms, about what is that? I would say probably about 50%. About 50% are cremated now, 50% are not. And that really varies, I find that really varies town by town. I think it does. I've seen numbers as low as 30 or 40, I've seen numbers as high as 60 or 70. Yes, ma'am, and then you, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Are there any regulations what you do with the cremains? Are there any regulations regarding what you can do with the cremains? Right? So, and, and first of all, are you, are you um, required to give the cremains to the, a particular person, to the next of kin, to the next to, of kin? Next of kin. <clears throat> uh, the state views cremation as what they refer to as the final place of disposition. So we obviously have the respect, and, and you as a family member, the respect of the cremated remains are those still of your loved one, but the state no longer looks at those as human remains. They look at them as cremains, the crematory or the cemetery is the final place of disposition. So as far as what you do with the cremains, you're allowed to do what you'd like to do with the cremains. Now I am told that if you want the cremains dis uh, dispersed at sea, and if you tell the Coast Guard that, that there is a rule <laughs> that you have to get a permit and that, the, and that the disposition has to be farther than a mile away off to sea. Have you heard of that? I believe that's correct. Yeah. So. Think about that if you go to ask the Coast Guard about this. All right. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Um, the approximate price. I, I couldn't hear that. Approximate price. What is the approximate price of cremation? And now remember, as Mike had said, cremation is like one piece of this whole thing. So you're just talking about that that piece, which is just the disposition of the body. Right? So, well, 
funeral home charges versus outside expenses is are you looking for like a ball ball right around thirty four hundred dollars so that's total all in yeah and that would include like outside charges the ferry charge for us to go back and forth with the first to the crematory um, the crematory fee itself the medical examiner fee which um, was referred to earlier as well um, oftentimes what we do for families we order certified copies of a death certificate for them um, those come from the town clerk uh, are issued from the town clerk in which the person passes away um, and those vary from five dollars to thirty one dollars depending on which city or town that you're getting them from most of the island um, towns here they're between five and ten dollars for a certified copy um, and families would need those for probating of a will insurance policies things like that they have the town seal on them much like a birth certificate or a marriage certificate and, and can you talk to, regarding those cremains, if you're putting those cremains in a grave, and we're going to talk about graves in a little while, this is just such an exciting presentation, isn't it? <laughs> so, if you're putting the cremains in a grave, um, is there an opening fee? I know there's an opening fee when you're doing a casket. Is there an opening fee regarding the there is. cremains? There is. And does that vary from cemetery to cemetery here on island? It does. It does. It's anywhere from fifty dollars to, I believe, um, up in Chilmark. I think it's two hundred dollars for an interment of and a cremated remains in a grave. So we're going to talk about that piece in a little while. But you're going to find that the, these, the, those, the cemetery things vary tremendously. Yes, sir. Does the steamship club charge a passenger fee for the body going one way? <laughs> <laughs> Since I've been on the island, I've heard that question asked a thousand times. They do not. <laughs> so is it, is it a one, they, not a one-way fee? Is that a one-way? <laughs> <laughs> you know. uh, there's a question over here. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, I, I just wondered, suppose the estate of the person doesn't have enough like this, approximately $3,400. Maybe the person is kind of indigent, has, has an estate with uh, non-liquid assets. Uh, how is this paid for? The question, kind of really more broadly, which refers not just to cremation, but in general, is if there is an indigent person, or a person who does not have the resources to get buried, how does that get taken care of? Have you bumped into cases where, where d does the Commonwealth, does Mass Health pay that? Sure, you know? yeah. Mass Health will pay a portion of that. Um, oftentimes, if somebody's in a long term care at a nursing home, um, they'll accumulate money in what they refer to as their patient need account because they haven't been using that uh, money. Um, and the nursing home is required to either um, turn that money over to the funeral home to pay for funeral expenses, or they're required to turn that back into the state. And I know that there is, I, if, I believe through Mass Health, there is a number, and I can't remember what that number is, to pay for, to pay for a funeral. Yes, ma'am. What happens to metal parts of your body? Say you've had knee replacements and they're titanium and ceramic. I wouldn't want those to go back to my children with my ashes. Question, what happens to the metal parts of your body? Do they get melted down and recycled? No. Yes. Yes. So what? <laughs> so what the crematory? Well, what the crematory does after the cremation takes place? They take the cremated remains and they they go through there and they take out metal objects, you know, zippers on clothing, pins, things like that, um, and they collect that metal at the the crematory that we use. They collect that metal and then they bury it on the grounds of the crematory collect a significant amount and do that. So what you get back to your next of kin is your cremated remains. That's good because the little bone fragments that I got back from my father and mother were a little disturbing. It's not, not everything gets burned up. That's correct. Yes. Yes, sir, and then, yes. In line with that same question, uh, how about gold, uh, gold? And teeth and uh, inlays and whatnot? The intense, the intense, what about gold? The intent, gold. The intent uh, I've asked that uh, question to the crematory before the intensity of the heat and that metal is is um, gets evaporated. It's not like a titanium, like a hip kind of thing. No. <laughs> <laughs> On that bright note, next slide. <laughs> um, I guess I guess we talked about we talked about this a little bit. Showing we talked about showings and other arrangements. Are there any any questions regarding any of those things? Showings, other arrangements, any other things that happen in the cemetery. And, 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 and once again, I think Mike has pointed out when you are when you are hiring them, you know, you're really there are really two kinds of things that are happening. You're hiring them to do things that they have kind of control of the numbers, but then in many cases they're kind of the pass through because they're buying things on your behalf. They're buying uh, death certificates. They're buying openings, openings at the at the right. They're buying you know crematory costs and things like that. And that's important to note when we get when we get a little bit farther on cemeteries. 
purchasing cemetery lots. And who, who exactly owns a cemetery lot? So there actually is some, there's some law on this. There's a statute on this. Um, and, and it speaks to the fact that if you are, that you can acquire, a person can acquire a grave site um, from a public cemetery, from the cemetery commissioners, or from a private cemetery. And it says that when you acquire it, you are to receive a deed um, regarding that grave site. Uh, but it doesn't say the form in which that deed is supposed to be. So it, often people will come in and show me a piece of paper that they got from a cemetery, and they say, is this valid? And I'll say, well, if the cemetery takes it as valid. The point is there is no standard. Now, once you own that grave site, what is it exactly that you own? Well, when I was, as I was thinking about it, I guess in legal terms, it's kind of like an easement, right? I mean, you don't actually own that piece of land, right? Um, you own the right to put certain things in that piece of land, right? But really, not really, in that you can only do that, you can only open up that piece of land with the permission of the cemetery commissioners, right? And then, um, if you suppose you own a site that has more than one grave in it, who can be buried there? Right? Well, as long as you're alive, you have the right to say whoever's going to be buried there because you own that site. Right? Um, what happens after you die? Well, there is a statute that says that after you die, your spouse can be buried there. You can, they, your spouse cannot be prohibited from being buried next to you, even if you really didn't like her. It's just kind of the way it goes, <laughs> right? Because that's the statute. After that, your children have the right to be buried there, but in no particular order. So it's like first come, first serve regarding who is going to use the kind of the remaining sites. And you no, know, and that I get those kinds of questions. You know, of people that you know they're not sure. Several people want to be buried next to mom, and children's spouses. No, not children's spouses. They don't have the right to be buried there, right? So that is actually an issue. I get, but but I guess the general point of this is that there is very little state law on this, right? If you are being buried in a particular cemetery, the rules are whatever the cemetery commissioners there say they are. So for example, oftentimes it will happen that I'll talk to a granddaughter or a niece or a nephew who knew that their grandparent or aunt or uncle owned this, this lot with this set of graves that now aren't going to be used because they didn't have any kids and so who's going to, who wants to be buried next to Uncle Charlie? You know, I mean, they've all, everybody's got their own family, right? And the question is, so can we cash them in? You know, can you kind of surrender them? And the answer is, depends on what the cemetery says. They may have a rule that says you can. I know some cemeteries that will allow you to return graves in return for, and they'll pay you what was originally paid for the grave, typically about five bucks from about 50 years ago, they'll give you, right? Um, can you sell them? Can you transfer them? I, knew, I, know, I, I know of a cemetery that will allow transfers um, as long as you're, you're certifying that you're transferring the right to be buried in that grave for no more than what you paid for it, right? 